Hi, welcome to the Commercial Gas Engineer channel. Another week in the life. All right, in this video, I'm going to just go through what I've been up to. And um, here I was changing some gaskets whilst carrying out a service. So whilst doing so, I was also washing down the burner, giving it a good clean inside and outside. Just running it through with cold water. Spraying down the unit with vinegar and water. And then giving it a brush down as well. And changing these rubber seals. They're very finicky to get on, as I'm sure you're aware. You have to feed them around. like, And you can end up with a lot more once you get to the other section. But you can work it around, so you'll get there in the end with it. So on this unit... This Ramea Kinta found that there was a problem with the PCB because it kept knocking out the MCB. Also found that the plate had cracked. It's quite common for these plates to crack, so try not to over tighten them. Here we have a Weizmann commercial boiler. And in this particular boiler, we we're just carrying out servicing on it. Just having a look around, making sure all is well on this unit. It's got its servo motor down there. It's quite an attractive model. I like the way it's all been laid out. Down here you have the gas valve. And this is the side of the case. The main boiler. Controls. Pressure switches on top of the boiler. And then isolation valves. On your flow and return. And your bypass. So, getting the unit into high fire and then testing it in high fire. It has a chimney sweep button on the side to assist you. High fire is here, low fire is down there. Then carried out some diagnostic work on getting a generator on. I believe that this generator was able to work to 60 or 80 amps. I can't recall exactly, but I believe it was about that. It was currently pulling um, 25 amps. I think this generator was could operate at 100 amps. But um, that's possibly when it's new, but it was pulling 25 amps. That's what the plant room was demanding, 25 amps with some fluctuations. Yes, here we have it, 100 amps. And this is a generator connected up to the control panel. And here I was just tracing the wires on this leak detection cable. So water leak detection cable and just having a look inside the panel to check the wiring then i attended a call out to a force draft burner which had locked out again initially it locked out on inadequate air going to the unit that was several weeks ago when the weather was very hot um, i believe that the boiler didn't have enough oxygen for combustion when the temperatures were reaching um, some of their records so the boiler locked out on inadequate air for combustion um, then on this particular lockout, it locked out on the flame strength not being good enough. But I checked the flame strength down here after resetting the boiler and it was all well. So sometimes these boilers pick up dust when they're drawing in air and it goes on the probes. So more than likely the probes will be changing, but it may have just been a one-off occurrence. But we'll monitor that force draft burner. On this, you have two pumps on a pressurization unit that have failed and need replacing. I'm not sure how familiar you are with these Flamco units, how to operate them. So there's two Flamco units on this system because you've got plate to plate heat exchangers. So you have one on one side and one on the other side of the plate. So one's on the boiler side, one is on the client side. So once you've got through the settings, through the security code, you do minus and plus at the same time, it will say enter code. And then the code is four. So you have to use the plus and minus keys to go up. So you go to four and then you hit set and you go to, so it's four, seven, zero, six. And then you press set and then you go into the settings. Keep pressing set, it will go through the different settings and then accept them. And then you can go minus or plus to make adjustments to them. But it's quite long winded. So you might have to press that set button quick if you want to go right through the settings 
This is the same principle in all pressurization units, just different passcodes. This is this is a Flamco Flexi Filler 250D, but it's a similar concept on many pressurization units. Some may be different. You may have bits that are external from the from the um, boxing of the, or should I say, casing of the pressurization unit. But there, a lot of these units follow a similar principle, just different passwords. This is a four draft burner on a temporary unit on a, on a site as a temporary boiler. If you have a look at it, um, it's got the wiring down here. As you can see, you've got your phase one, your phase two and your phase three over here. And then you have your fan motor starter here. You've got your, your overheat down here and you've got your different amp settings for it to lock out at. So you can make adjustments here and slide them up if necessary. And you have a button over here for testing. You can push it over and you hear the fan motor start up. And there's a reset button here on the overheat as well. And then this is your spark generator. This is your Dung's multi-block gas valve. Over here, you can um, disconnect here and you can um, pull the burner out. A few more other connections as well. You've got an air test point here. This is your head, combustion head test point. Down here, you've got your sequence control box and you've got your reset button here. Sight glass. Another sight glass. Your butterfly. Air pressure switch. Spark generator. You've got your high and low set in here. I love hearing these fire up. Sound like a plane taking off. There we go, it's on. And um, also over here is your low pressure gas switch. So if the gas pressure is inadequate, that will um, cause the appliance to shut down. Hear that noise this boiler's making? Nice humming noise. Microgenus. So that was the Ariston Microgenus and here we are inside. Um, basically, the boiler was buzzing away and before I even went there and saw it, and thankfully the customer had a spare PCB, um, so I turned the power off. I advised them to turn the power off and remove the plug. So I changed the PCB. And then um, after I changed the PCB, I, I thought all would be well. But then this fault code came up. Um, and this fault code came up simply because there was no flame after safety time of seven seconds. So I didn't have that fault code before. I had a little look inside to make sure all my wires were connected. Lo and behold, I had not reconnected the um, flame detection so anyways here i am um, brushing up the unit as i'm inside i might as well just brush it up and file it down a bit file down the uh, ignition probes and detection so um yep i left the lead out but the main reason for this um, boiler locking out was that the pcb was knackered you can see now the boiler is operating and the customer was happy because um, it was sorted out within about half an hour and then got them to test their hot water and their hot water was rising the temperature was rising so here we go 52 celsius and stabilizing okay then my flue gas analyzer readings were good and then i was just checking for a temperature rise on the radiators for a brief moment so yep pcb was changed it was 30 pounds on ebay had a spare one from before so i was looking at to see if what what was wrong with the existing pcb like if i could see any signs of burn marks on the board so and any discrepancies but don't know if i could see any problem on it but it was making a humming noise couldn't quite work out what was wrong with it and on this unit, I was just checking my fags afterwards. I wasn't there for that, but always check your fags, even if that's not what you're there for. Then I went to a call out at a building which had no hot water. And then I went to an idle Concord CXA. There was also a Regency boiler there as well. 
Um, I just checked the basics first when I walked in. So I made sure the shunt pumps were working. And then I went to the unit and had a little look to see what was happening whilst it was sparking, seeing if there was a spark down there. So I continued checking the basics, seeing if there was gas to the appliance. It sounded as though there was gas. One of the appliances had a pilot light on, but for some reason it was failing to light. And then in the end, I pulled out one of the burners, washed them down and changed some, changed the detection lead this, and the um, also the spark. Swapped around some bits from um, the burner bar on the left because um, you can just use the leads and so on and the pilot assembly if you swap around the left burner. So there was an obsolete boiler there, which I um, used, cleaned down the the um, left burner and then lo and behold the boiler came on and started lighting consecutively rather than locking out completely so the um i also had a look at the ignition board and the aquastat board but it wasn't either of those it wasn't the ignition board or the aquastat board it was the um burner failing to light and then i observed the temperatures rising before leaving and then I went to check again at a later stage to make sure that it was um, continuing to rise. And if you look on the chart, you'll see how it is, um, how the temperature is rising on the chart. Then last, then after that, once those, I was satisfied that those boilers, that the hot water was coming back on, I had a look at two Regency boilers that were playing up. I managed to get one of them to light. I did manage to get one of them to light after... Um, doing some work on it I made some adjustments to the burner I found um, some of the insulation on the um, burner on the on the ignition assembly and I think that was also stopping it from lighting but I think on this one of the units one of these Regency units I believe that there was a problem on the PCB or a call for heat don't think it was calling for heat properly and on the other Regency boiler that was that was at fault. I believe the gas valve had a problem, so I did some some work and then um, I was just making sure that I had no leak. I had a slight leak on the gas valve, so I had to um, put some jointing compound on there. And then um, once that was fine, I managed to get one of the units to light. But the only problem was the ignition wasn't quite right. So I think that the gas valve may need adjusting. But it's something I'm going to work on another day. Okay, thank you for joining me. Until next time. Bye-bye-bye.